Okay, so now let's introduce to you the first model, the EOQ model. Let's start uh, with this example. Suppose uh, I am airline, um, an airline company. Use is 500 tail lights per year. It purchases these tail lights from a manufacturer at a unit price 500. So each tail light costs $500, and in total in each year we need 500 tail lights. Let's assume that the tail lights are consumed at a constant rate throughout a year. That means uh, we certainly do not know whether in each day we need to uh, install a new tail light or not. But roughly, uh, as in estimation, we say that roughly in throughout a year, the the rate we consume tail lights is a constant. Okay, so. Roughly in each day, we need about uh, 1.5 tail lights per day. Oh, and we assume that's somewhat a constant. And then, when we need to place an order, there is an ordering cost of $5 incurred regardless the order quantity. We may think about this $5 as um, some processing cost or some uh, shipping cost we need to pay to the supplier. And then the holding cost is two cents per tail light per month. Um, because if we want to store something in our warehouse, then of course there is a holding cost. Okay. The problem of IM Airline is to minimize the total cost, which is the sum of ordering, purchasing, and holding costs for the 500 tail lights. And then the issue is how much should we order in each order? And when should we place an order? Okay, that's the issue. And then let's ask ourselves a question first. What is the benefit of having a small or large order? Okay, so if we order just a few items, a few tail lights in each order, the good thing is that we will have very few inventory in our um, warehouse. Okay, and then the holding cost will be smaller. The key is that tail lights are consumed at a constant rate. So if we uh, order, say, 50 units in each order, then they will be consumed gradually, and there is a certain uh, holding cost. But if we order, uh, for example, 500 units in each order, then for a lot of times, we will have a large inventory level in our warehouse. Okay. So if we have a small order, we can save holding cost. But on the other hand, we're going to pay a lot of ordering cost in each year. So this is indeed a trade-off between ordering cost and holding cost. So the company's question may be answered with the so-called economic order quantity model. This, uh, this model, uh, abbreviated as EOQ, it's just saying that we want to find the order quantity that is the most economic. Economic here just means um, cost saving, something like that. Okay, we know a quantity of too small quantity needs requires us to pay a lot of ordering co uh, ordering cost, and a large quantity requires us to pay a lot of holding cost. So we want to find a balance, and that balance is the most economic one. Technically, we will formulate an NLP whose optimal solution is the optimal order quantity. So let's do it. Let's um, briefly review all those assumptions. Demand is deterministic and occurs at a constant rate. Okay, And then, regardless of the order quantity, there is a fixed ordering cost. There is no shortage allowed. You need to satisfy all the demands every time when you, every day, every single moment when you need some product, you need to have it in the warehouse. Let's assume the ordering lead time is zero. Once you place an order, those five, those units, those tail lights will appear in your warehouse. This is certainly can be relaxed, and later we will do that in the later videos. Finally, the inventory holding cost is constant throughout a year. So, things will not change for holding cost. Today is two cents per unit per month, and after um, five months, 
it will still be two cents per unit per month. With these assumptions, we can set up the following parameters. Capital D is the annual demand. Uh, we measure it as unit. Annual means in each year, how many units do we need? K is the unit ordering cost. It's dollars per order. Okay, for each order, how much we need to pay? Small h is the unit holding cost per year. That means for each unit, storing it in a warehouse for one year. How much do we need to pay? And finally, p is the unit purchasing cost. For each unit, how much do we need to pay? There is one thing that is important is that uh, we always talk about the same time uh, unit. Okay, If you count D as annual demand, then your H must be the holding cost per year. Or if you say this is a monthly demand, then your H should be holding cost per month. Okay, And also, no, all the um, dollar unit must be the same. If we are talking about dollars, then everything must be dollars. If we are talking about cents, everything must be cents. If we are talking about NT dollars, then everything must be NT dollars. The decision variable is Q. Q is the order quantity per order. Okay, how many units? We need to decide the order quantity of each order. And our objective is to minimize the annual total cost. For all our calculations, we will use one year as our time unit. I mean for this example. Of course, for other problems, if one month or one season or one day is easier to do, then you may use other time units, but you need to make everything consistent. So, suppose we say one year is our time unit, and D is the annual demand. Then we can say D is just the demand rate. How fast we consume our products. Okay, how fast we consume our inventory. D can be called the demand rate if we use one year as our time unit. If D is smaller, then the consumption rate is smaller. If D is larger, then of course the consumption rate is larger. So graphically, uh, let's uh, visualize it. One thing we want to draw is the inventory level. Inventory level is the number of inventory we have on hand. Okay, so you may imagine that that's the amount, number of products you have in your warehouse or the number of products you have on your shelf. Anyway, inventory level is the key for answering this question because that allows us to measure the holding cost. Okay, so because there is no ordering lead time, we will always place an order when the inventory level is zero, right? Whenever we have no inventory, we place an order. And also, we will not do that when we still have inventory. Because once we order, things will come up in our warehouse immediately. Okay. So the best thing to do is it must be to order um, inventory, to order something, only when we have no inventory. And then if we know that inventory is consumed at a constant rate, then the inventory level must be like this. At some time point, I have, suppose this is my inventory. And then because inventory is consumed at a constant rate, it will decrease like this. Okay. When we assume it is in a con constant rate, this line will be a straight line. And when this line hit zero, we will place an order. And then according to the order quantity, uh, let's assume the order quantity is here, I will get to the order quantity immediately. Okay, And then um, I will have the same situation. When I hit the zero again, I will order and I will get unit. Uh, Q is my order quantity. And then things will repeat again, again, and again. As we can see, if the environment does not change, then of course, one single queue is optimal. There is no reason for you to order fewer today, but more in the next order. Of course, in all orders, you will have one single number that is the optimal quantity. So that's why we only have one decision variable, because 
things are not changing. Okay, so the graph will be like this. Our inventory level will uh, always get to Q, the order quantity, and then starts to deplete at a constant rate. When it hits zero, it will go up to zero uh, to Q again, and then repeat. <coughs> so this is immediate exactly the graph we mentioned to you. The same situation will repeat again and again. Here, uh, Q is the inventory level, right? Uh, we order up to Q. So in each order, we order Q units. That's why when we have zero, we get to Q level. Uh, the level will become Q. And then you probably also uh, want to ask, why do we have these ratios? <coughs> Every time when we order up to Q, items will start to uh, be used. And the rate on the rate for using our items, or you can say the slope. The rate is exactly D. Okay, we just mentioned to you that when we use one year as the um, time unit, then the annual demand is just the demand rate. So that means the slope of this uh, line, these straight lines, are just a negative D. Okay, so when we have Q units, it takes Q over D year uh, to deplete everything. Suppose Q is 100, then we need 100 over 500. Uh, D is 500 is the annual demand or the demand rate. In each year, we consume this amount. We need 1 over 5 or 0 0.2 years to use out all the inventory we have, you know, to use out all the 100 units, okay? So that's why we say, okay, in the first um, cycle, uh, we say this is an ordering cycle. In the first ordering cycle, it takes Q over D amount of time you know, to use everything. Or the next, next time we order will be 2Q over D, and so on and so on. Now the key question is, in average, how many units are stored in our warehouse? So in each time point, the inventory level is changing, is changing, is changing, right? But we are asking in each year, or in average, how many units are stored in our warehouse? So that's just that. Um, to answer this question, let's look at this figure again. Inside this cycle, well, the inventory level starts from Q and then continuously, constantly drop to zero. So of course, within this uh, cycle, the average inventory cost is Q over 2. Right? Q over 2 is the average inventory level within this cycle. But more interestingly, this will be true forever, right? For the second cycle, it's the same thing. For the third cycle, it's the same thing. So, <coughs> in a year, we say that in average, we have Q over 2 units on hand, and Q over 2 will be used in our formulation. So, the annual holding cost, in average, uh, is just HQ divided by 2. Because the length of time period is just 1, okay, we take 1 year as the time period. And then on the inventory level is Q over 2 in average. So in average, each item is stored in our warehouse for one year. Okay? Anyway, what am I talking about? Okay. <clears throat> in each year, in average, Q over 2 units are stored in our warehouse for one year. So those guys, those items must incur H uh, holding cost per year. So that's why the product of them is the annual holding cost. Okay? And then we also have annual purchasing cost. It's P times D. D is the annual demand we need to satisfy. And then, no matter what's the order quantity, in total we need to buy exactly capital D units. And each cost us small P dollars. Finally, we also have an annual ordering cost. Okay, 
For each order, we need to pay k as the ordering cost, fixed ordering cost, and d divided by q is our number of orders in each year. Okay, in each year we need to buy d units, and in each order we buy q units. So in average, in each year we need to buy d over, and we need to place d over q units. You probably want to ask what will happen if this is not an integer. That's fine because the 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 the, the, the situation will run over years, years and years. Okay, so if this is not an integer, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now collecting all of them, we have a nonlinear program for optimizing the ordering decision. Is this one? I want to find a q which is non-negative. To minimize my total cost, which is the ordering cost, purchasing cost, and the holding cost. Okay, this is a nonlinear program because here, Q is put at the denominator of a ratio. So this is a nonlinear program. PD, no, PD, this guy, is actually a constant, right? It has nothing to do with Q. So when we want to optimize Q, it doesn't matter. So let's take it away. Starting from now, we will only talk about Tc of Q as our objective function, and Tc of Q consists only um, the holding cost, holding cost, and the ordering cost. So this is the function we want to、um, minimize, and in the next video, we will tell you how to do it and、uh, to complete to solve the problem of IM airline. Thank you.